Good morning, everybody. It is a very crisp Florida morning. I don't know what degrees it is. Like I said, I have no real concept of temperature, but it's chilly. I'm wearing a sweater and my comfy slippers. They're so comfy. And uh, so I'm just checking things because it did go down pretty low last night. I don't think it went anywhere near freezing, but uh, so we had a long all day, good soaking rain yesterday and holy cow, look at these guys. They're huge. All right. Love that. Look at this. They're so happy. There's, there's nothing they like better than a nice, good soaking and aphids seem to still be off of them. Although yeah, a couple other bugs, let's get them off of there. Shake it. We've got some flowers coming off. Nice. I do wish the rest of it would fill out, but I don't think that's the nature of milkweed. Um, and eventually it will die off and we'll have to put some more in, but every time they flower, there are seeds and they, you know, they're puffy seeds. So they, they seed and then they have those little feathers on them that kind of slowly cast them around the yard. And actually one of the original ones that we had over here in this bed seeded and actually planted a little wild one right here. So I just kind of put it in with this tree that's helping to keep it up because otherwise it would be laying on the ground. And these have had some aphid troubles too, but I'll tell you, this one really, really took off. It's just in there, <laughs> you know, it just kind of sprung up from there and it is one of the healthiest ones we have. So I'm leaving it there. Um, another one just grew randomly in my daughter's tea plant. This one just grew right up the side. And so I just pulled it out of there and that's the one that's planted right there. So, you know, I'd like to have a nice big collection of, um, milkweed. So we have a nice big collection of butterflies. No more neem oil. No more of that stuff. All right, so I'm actually very chilly <laughs> right now. It's nice and breezy. It's, uh, with that big rain we had yesterday came in a nice cold front. But the amount of rain, and we did still get some washout because I did spread a little hay, but it all washed to the middle of the of the garden, so. This one stayed put, but I don't have anything in there yet. But yeah, everything is, uh, it's coming up nicely. I'm gonna have to get in here and weed this as soon as the actual plants get bigger. I do remember now planting some bell peppers in here too, because um, apparently onions and shallots and things like that, they really like companion crops. And companion crops do really well because onions and shallots keep away the majority of the pests. So they don't get eaten as much. Natural pest resistance and companion planting apparently really makes uh, for healthier plants because it's not just all monoculture. You know, the one thing I promised myself I wasn't going to do was plant the same plants over and over and over again in the same place because you will strip the plant the soil of all of its nutrients and monoculture gardening is really not it's been proven that it is not uh optimally nutritious um yields so we want as many vitamins and minerals and nutrients as we can get out of our food 
And that was another reason why I started this whole mania. <laughs> I keep calling it a mania because so far it still is. Um, is because not only did I get sticker shock at the grocery store, but I started reading about it and really by the time you eat the produce and the, the food that's at the grocery store, it has next to no nutritional value left whatsoever because the vitamins just keep leaching out of it the longer it sits. So, you know, being able to consume freshly picked vegetables, you're gonna get the best nutrition from those. Um, even if they sit in your kitchen for a few days, you know, before you use them, they're gonna lose a little bit of nutritional value, but not the amount that uh, you would lose if you were purchasing it at a grocery store or you know, something, a big box store or whatever. So, um, and, and truthfully, my doctor had told me, you know, I, I really want you to try a Mediterranean diet you know, because of my my issues that I have. Um, and since I've been doing that, I have felt a lot better. And, but it is expensive to eat that way. So if I can grow the majority of my Mediterranean diet out here, <laughs> that's great. You know, I, I really would love to dedicate an entire area to an herb garden. And maybe I will after I do sweet potatoes. I might, because I am dying to do sweet potatoes. I watched a video on how to grow slips, which are just basically little seedlings, out of a sweet potato. And I'm dying to try it. You could get hundreds and hundreds of plants just off of one sweet potato. So we're going to try that. All right. So, uh, you know, along with the rain came a lot of wind. So I've got a, a little bit of cleanup to do back here, but not too, too bad. So I am going to tackle that plant today because <laughs> You know, every time I film, I notice it and it's, oh, that does not look good. So the next time you guys see that plant, it will be all green and happy. And I might even take a few more out of it to replant somewhere else, maybe in the front, maybe in the front yard, if I can get a hole dug deep enough, <laughs> the rocks. So um, we'll see. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye.